Me and my colleagues at the Swedish Institute for Education and Research, and uh, also uh, with the two researcher that we engaged in the project, and that's Ingrid Engvall and uh, Annette Sandberg, uh, who are experts within this field. And um, the Swedish Institute for Education and Research is a government agency, and we produce systematic review reviews for teachers on teaching. And um, systematic reviews are integration of several research studies, the synthesis of the studies. So it's no primary studies, but it's a kind of secondary research. And uh, doing systematic reviews comes from need to uh, summarize research within different areas. You know, there's a lot of research being published, and it's difficult for people to keep up with the uh, average. It's difficult for researchers, and teachers, and, and professionals who want to go uh, uh, into the research. So then we do systematic views, which is, which is summaries of existing research. And this review is on teaching in preschool. And it's about how teachers can support and stimulate the children's social skills through play. And the sco social skills are, for example, communication, collaboration, and um, building a community, creating relationships, and so forth. And uh, the review, is, it looks like this. It's uh, presented today. Uh, and uh, you're welcome to take uh, here, you have with us. And uh, it's written in Swedish. And first and foremost, it's written for uh, teachers in preschool, and, but also um, as well as for interested researchers. And uh, I'm going to say something uh, about my presentation today. I'm going to talk about what we have done in this review why we have done it, and how we have done it. <coughs> and uh, the what, uh, we have summarized 15 uh, research studies within the subject, and uh, we present the result in the form of teachers' actions. Uh, for example, they guide uh, the, the children in the play, they mediate, they observe, and so forth. And we also talk about uh, the teacher's approach. That's about the sensitivity and responsiveness uh, in their actions. I'm also going to say something about the why. And uh, first and foremost, it's to provide guidance for teachers in their teaching. And uh, how we have done it, it's a systematic review. And I'm going to say something about what it is that characterize this. Okay, what the teacher's action. Uh, the research studies in this review are observations of play situations in preschool in different countries. Most of them are video recorded and analyzed. And the studies focus on interaction between the children and between the children and the teachers. And uh, the result is in the form of concepts and descriptions of, of the interaction and that provides an understanding of the interaction. Uh, it's either play that um, the children initiate, or it, it can be play that the teacher initiates. But um, in all cases, the teachers act, teachers act with the intention to support and stimulate play that promotes the development of children's social skills. So you can say that the teacher's actions are goal-oriented and the goal is the development of the children's social skills. So, you can, uh, in other words, the teacher teach, uh, since leading goal-oriented processes are the definition of teaching. We present the result in this review thematically, and the themes are the, the teacher's different actions. For example, uh, that I talked about before, the guiding, mediating, observing, reflecting, and so forth. And we have three categories of teachers' actions. One category is um, to stage manage the play. We call it in Swedish regissera för lek. 
and it's about creating prerequis prerequisites. I have <laughs> practiced this word very many times, but I can't say it anyway. Uh, creating prerequisites for play by, for example, scheduling time for play, uh, providing play materials, and de developing frames and rules for play. And we also have the category of participating in uh, the children's play by being present, by guiding the play, by mediating or negotiating. And we also have a category uh, about observe and reflect, uh, where, um, which is uh, important also to meet the children's interests and needs in their play. And these bubbles here uh, show the structure of the result chapter. And um, in the result chapter, we present the teacher actions in the context of different play situations in, in preschool. And I will give you, I'll try to give you some examples of this. In one study, the teacher provides play material for den making in an outdoor environment. So this is an example of um, uh, the action to stage manage and providing play materials. The den making, that's koi bygge, uh, is uh, meant to provide the children with a focus for <coughs> communication and collaboration. And here is an excerpt from uh, this uh, situation, this play situation. And the outer setting here is a courtyard with a very limited outdoor space. And the teachers brought stick branches from a woodland area outside the town. They trimmed them so that there were no sharp twigs protruding from the main branch. They decided how many sticks they brought into the setting and also made decisions about complementary resources such as paint, blankets and strips. Uh, this outer space is quite limited and it's therefore challenging for the children to make a den for themselves to play in. So they... Um, adapt the play and instead of making a den for themselves they make a nest for a pet rabbit Bertie who's in this courtyard and this is described in the following uh, that the children seamlessly adapt to the play when one child asked where's Bertie going to live and this sparked a lengthy conversation between the children about what Bertie would need to improve its living conditions and resulted in the den not being constructed for the children to play in but for Bertie to live in. And they used the materials to create sleeping quarters, a kitchen area, which also incorporated a vegetable plot of the raised flower beds and a mini assault course to keep him fit after eating too many vegetables. The children created a flexible and creative approach to den making in a limited space, using their imagination, problem solving skills, and social understanding and interaction to build a den for Bertie. And in the report, we illustrate more of the children's uh, social interactions. And we mean that this vivid interaction between the children created opportunities to develop social skills, like their ability to communicate and problem solve and uh, cooperate with each other. This is just a short example of one action. And uh, we also have uh, the category participate. The teacher participate in the children's play by being actively present. This is also an example from the result chapter. Uh, in this example that I'm going to show you, the teacher has planned for an activity where very young children, they are about one to two years old, will be washing toy animals with washcloths at a water table. But the activity do not end up as going as the teacher has planned it. One particular infant, Ben, he is more interested in the wash washcloth themselves. And Ben throws cloths onto a round table. The teacher throws it back onto the table toward them and encourage him to throw it again. Edgar throws his cloth. Then Ben and Andrew throw cloths. The teacher throws again, too. She throws one to Aiden. The teacher is showing a lot of excitement and encouragement. And she makes a little yell when throwing, when, uh, which Edgar imitates, and which the teacher imitates right, right back again. So Ben, he creates a new rule in this game. The teacher responds to him by full encouragement and excitement. 
and her participation stimulates the other children's interests and maintain their attention. <coughs> and this situation provides the opportunities to de develop skills like communication between each other by throwing with uh, cloths uh, back and forth and, and also by building a community, community by mimicking each other's ideas. And finally, I will give you some example of, from the category Observe and Reflect, and uh, which is important uh, in order to meet the children's needs and interest in the play. We have one example in our report, uh, which, uh, in, uh, which teacher closely observed the children's pretend play, Stealing Babies. It's quite an exciting play, because there is a bad guy involved, which steals babies. And the teacher, by closely observing this, come to appreciate the rhythm and structure in the play. The episodes in the role play is uh, repeated several times by, by the children. They do the same thing over and over again, the same scene. And uh, the teacher finds that the repetition provides a structure for the excitement and the strong emotion inherent in the play. And with this insight in mind, the teacher is careful not to rush or impo impose rules that might disturb the rhythm in the play. So it's uh, one example of observation and reflection uh, can help the teacher to uh, gain insight in how to support the children's play. Uh, that was that example. And we have another example, which is extensively described in the report. It's uh, about um, how teachers, through observation, can plan for more inclusive play. And the observation this time is a newcomer child's so-called non-participation in the role play Princesses and Dragons. The child never enters the play. She just observes it when other children play. And the teacher's observations suggest that the child lacked both social and cultural experience needed for participating in this play. And this gives the teacher valuable knowledge of how they might support the child's participation when they plan for, for, for play. They can plan for the play themes, for example, that are new for all the children and not just for this child. Um, but our review also give, gives accounts of interaction where the teacher's action do not stimulate and support the children's play, but instead affect the children's play in a negative way that might um, disturb a bit or even interrupt it. And this highlights the importance of the teacher's approach uh, to the play, namely sensitivity and responsiveness. And sensitivity, by that I mean lyhördhet. I'm not sure about the translation of that, um, that concept, but anyway, in, this, in Swedish we call it lyhördhet in the report. Responsiveness. What? It, it is responsiveness, it's like an extra word. Yeah. Lyhörd, det är jättesvårt att översätta. I mean, I'm British and I hate and that's oh, okay, never okay, how okay. to translate that properly. Yeah. It's like a mix of several words in English. Yes, yes. We end up in the responsiveness. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. And then um, sensitivity refers to sensitivity towards children's perspective, needs, and interests, and uh, also to respond to children's need by adapting the teaching according to that. So that's important. And in the in one chapter, we discuss the teacher's different actions in the light of sensitivity and responsiveness. And also we conclude that uh, sensitivity should uh, permit all parts of teaching, the planning, the stage managing, and uh, also the participation, and also the observ observation and uh, reflection. Uh, we also conclude that the teacher has to be flexible and adaptable in their approach, without, lo without then losing sight of the goal to develop the children's social skills. We saw examples of a flexible approach in the play, uh, where, which I talked about, was uh, 
planned water activity where the, the children would uh, wash toy animals, but which turned out into a throwing game with a washcloth. Uh, and also, when the children were uh, intended to build a den for themselves, but instead turned it out to build a nest for a pet rabbit. In both of these examples, the teacher encouraged the change of the play, and the children um, are enthusiastically are engaged in the play. These English words. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say about Swedish. <laughs> Okay. okay, now to the why. Why have we done this? Uh, one reason is to increase teachers' knowledge or way to stimulate and support children's social skills through play. And this knowledge that we present in this report invites the teacher to see and understand their practice in new ways. And also, it might also put into words what the teachers already know and what they already do. And, by, and then providing a better ground for talk about teaching with colleagues. Um, another reason is to, um, to contribute to research being a part of preschool practice. And in that way it concerns the Swedish Education Act, Skolagen, about that education being based on scientific knowledge. And um, a third reason uh, is to uh, be of help to construe what teaching can be in preschool. The curriculum for the preschool has been revised, as you probably know, and it will take effect this summer. The revised curriculum highlights the importance of play for the children's development and learning, and also the concept of teaching has been introduced in the curriculum for the, for the preschool. And we argue that this review contributes to an understanding of how teaching can be construed and applied in preschool. Okay, and how have we done this? We have done a, a so-called systematic review, and a systematic review, uh, con it involves, it can be different methods. It's not one single method, it's different methods, depending on the research question and depending on the studies included. But it's, um, it's done by researchers, and uh, as I said earlier, we engaged two researchers for this project, and who are experienced researchers within this field. We have one here today, Ingrid Engdahl. Also, I as a project leader and my assistant project leader have a, have a PhD in education. And the systematic review refers to research methods for integrating scientific knowledge. And um, this is done uh, in order to the included study to be of relevance and of good quality. And I'm going to say something about that, how we have done it. We have done searches in national and international databases, and then we have used search strings with words and phrases. And then um, this is done by our information specialist who is trained in doing searches. And here is an example from this one. Uh, we have uh, words uh, referring to the context that they're interested in, and it's uh, preschool. And uh, we have also only one word. It's uh, quite an exception, I can say, about the method or the way of working, and that's play in this. So we have um, studies from Many, very many different countries, you can say. And uh, this research in different databases result in quite a lot of studies, about 10,000 from the beginning. And the selection of studies are done by our engaged researchers. And they do the judgment independently of each other when they select them. And this is done in different steps. And this is to show the different steps. I, maybe you, I, it's not, I'm not sure you can see the figures, but uh, it's uh, not so important. It's just to show that it's done in different steps, the selection. And uh, first, uh, they, ju they uh, judge for relevance. Are, <coughs> is this uh, study relevant for our research question? And then finally, they judge for quality. Is this a, a study of good quality? 
and we ended up with 15 studies after this. And when, uh, when uh, the researchers do the relevance appraisal, they use inclusion criteria. And it's important to know also that this is not a review of all studies of play in preschool. Uh, but uh, uh, in order to, for the study to be included in this review, it must concern play, of course, and it must concern the development of children's social skills. And it must also be something about preschool teachers' action. What do they do in this situation? So, for example, uh, if a study is about play, and it's about the children's social skills, but it's not, uh, you can't see what the teacher do. Uh, the study is excluded. So, uh, and the one reason for this strict selection is that it's, it should be possible, there should be uh, similar, um, it should be roughly similar in order to, it should be possible to make a, a synthesis of the studies. And uh, the synthesis uh, provides, we argue, with rich knowledge of ways to support and stimulate children's social skills through play. Uh, it's a, a more fuller picture than one or two studies would have given. So, and as we say, the result mainly concerns different teacher actions, uh, structured in themes and also discussed in the light of sensitivity and responsiveness. Yes, and um, I'm gonna also show you a list. We have uh, published other systematic reviews at our institute, and these are all possible to uh, retrieve at our website. And also, uh, you can order them, they are free. So it is different. Okay, so if you have any questions, I'm you're welcome. Any questions? Yes. Can I ask you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so these are the studies. Are they mainly qualitative? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So these are basically descriptive studies of what is done. There are no sort of effect studies where you actually see that this turned out. So you know there is sort of more development mm -hmm. or something or not. Mm -hmm. Is there any studies at all like that? Uh, we have actually we have, but we have uh, <coughs> not, uh, made a lot of this, that result. Like mm -hmm. we have made a. Uh, um, meta-analysis mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. We uh, we include them. There are two, I think, okay. uh, and uh, that we discuss, and they they show some development. Yeah. But it's not the main focus. The main focus is uh, the different actions mm -hmm. and how we can understand yeah. what yeah. the teacher do. Yeah. Yes, uh, and there were some, but we when we selected them, we had the inclusion criteria that it must. Uh, show what the teacher does, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it was not uh, so apparent in the studies mm -hmm. that were more of experimental mm -hmm. kind of. Mm -hmm. So how is the information being disseminated to every, to so it's accessible to preschool teachers? Yes, because I think reading a, a book like this is. Um, is hard work for the average preschool teacher who doesn't have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have tried, when we, when we have written it, we yeah. have uh, thought about the preschool teacher and we have very many concrete examples <coughs> and uh, the result chapter is very descriptive and mm. uh, uh, telling stories about mm. different play situations, so it should be... Uh, but this is the only way that this information is being um, spread? Or is this information being spread in other forms because I mean, you think we're, we're talking about learning through play, and then here we've got <coughs> learning through the traditional form of reading. Mm -hmm. So, how mm -hmm. is this learning being spread mm -hmm. in other ways than just the traditional form of reading? Yeah, we we work very much on this at our institute, and uh, we are um, 
we have a uh, uh, summary of it mm. also to spread it, and we have um, different networks that we try to spread, spread it, spread it, spread it, spread it. And uh, we are developing a pod at mm. our institute also, yeah. where we should talk about our result uh, of the different systematic reviews. Mm. Have I forgotten anything? Yeah. Well, we're also planning to make a new website mm. to make it more accessible for, for teachers and uh, so yeah. and um, yeah, different way of reaching. Yeah. Mm. We have we started in 2015 our government agency, so we are still developing our method for communication and communicating our. Systematic reviews. So it's a very good question. Yeah, I think mean, mean, that's mm -hmm. it's a big problem, yes. I think, because um, mm -hmm. I work as a, like a link between preschools and like research, so mm -hmm. I go and support them. And that there isn't a how research is being translated so it's understandable. It's like you, you need sound bites. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that, like, we've been to different sessions where you know about this idea of this uh, only four slots, mm -hmm. <laughs> you can only take in so much information. And mm -hmm. this is like, too many slots at one go. So, mm -hmm. how do we make this uh, information so that people don't just put it down because that, that's too much, that it's too intense? Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of information that's re and research that's so important that it's not getting across mm -hmm. because it's it's um, it's written for researchers. It's not written for teachers. Mm -hmm. and, and most of the people working in preschool do not. Even though I mean, we say about first letter, preschool mm -hmm. teachers have a degree. Most people I've worked with in preschools do not have a degree. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a master's, and I'm like one of the most educated people. I've, I don't meet many of the people with mm -hmm. my level of education. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for me, it's all right to read this stuff. It's like, for the majority, it's... Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we think about that uh, mm -hmm. when we write, actually, and we have references, uh, preschool teacher as reference. Mm -hmm. Uh, when we write also. And, uh, but those are well, always the interested ones. Yes, I mean. yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, can I, can I yeah. ask you, have you actually looked at... No, I'm just going to no. get a hold of it yeah. now. And I, mean, yeah. Yeah, cause, I mean, I, I, I go around the world and talking mm. about play and learning, and this mm. is my thing, so mm. like, this is ooh, a bit more fodder for my keynote in April, so mm. for me it's, mm. it's perfect timing. Yeah. But I think it would be really useful for you with your eyes to look at the way yeah. they are written. Yeah. I have vested interest here because I used to work at the internet. Yeah, yeah. And we really did discuss how to how do we write these reports mm. so they do not sort of focus on the research perspective mm. perspective mm. Uh, and write it in, in a language that yeah. is not for researchers. So mm. I think it would be very useful if you could give them a little bit of feedback. But Absolutely. you see when you see this. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we mm. we really worked hard on that. Yes. Mm. Uh, and I think we came a bit on the way, in the way. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, in your research, have you seen some, have you come to some conclusions or seen some patterns or something that can serve as a guidance for preschools? Because play is it's so important. Yes. So have you, have you seen something that, to make observations, to support or act like this? Well, we think that uh, the themes that we have structured is a form of guidance for how how might I support the children's play. And we illustrate this with a long concrete exa examples. And also the concept of sensitivity and responsiveness and illustrated uh, in relation to these actions is also guidance. So these are the patterns, I think, that you mm -hmm. talk about, that we try to um, emphasize. Yes, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, the curriculum for the preschool uh, talks about what the goals for the education and for the teaching. <coughs> and we think that this research can illustrate how can I work with these goals? How can I do in my practice? And uh, the pattern is the themes of these concepts. Mm -hmm. These are one, this is a result chapter. These are different actions. And um, 
also the, the play situations involved in these different actions. But uh, I think uh, as a preschool teacher you can recognize the situations, even though it's not exactly the same, but you, you uh, recognize the processes that happen, the interactions, the communication patterns and so forth. And you can get ideas about inspiration and new ideas. I mean, when I talk to teachers, a lot of these things that they struggle with is when is it participation, um, and when is it interference, when is it observation, how do you observe? I mean, I ask preschool teachers to explain, because they'll, they'll go, especially back in August, to say, oh, we're observing the children. Also, well, how are you observing them? Mm. Not one of them has a strategy. Not one of them can explain it. Mm. It just looks like watching. Mm. So, but that... But everyone says all of these words, but they don't actually understand how they're using them mm. and, and how it supports their actual teaching process. Yes. So I think that there's a huge gap between um, like the theory and the practice. Mm. And I think a lot of people are saying the right things, but they're not actually doing what mm. they're saying mm. because mm. they haven't actually, it's not like embedded mm. in a way. It's mm. like, it's, it's surface, it's not in the marrow kind mm. of thing. Mm. Yeah, I can imagine. Maybe a bit of uh, guidance <coughs> with the, uh, It's not just the actions, but the actions uh, by showing sensitivity and responsiveness yeah. together with yeah. the actions. Maybe that can be a clue or something. Yeah. That, uh, it's almost like they need um, workshops. How, like, from reading this and then putting them into like a workshop situation mm. where they get to enact yeah. some of these mm. parts so they actually see how it feels like to be sensitive and responsive mm. and what this means and how it impacts them mm. and how it is with the observation and reflection mm. so that they actually feel it and can practice those bits. It's mm. Sometimes yes. I feel like there's not enough time between the theory and the practice mm to understand how those words are going in mm. because I mean the days are crazy they are long yeah. and there is there isn't and they're so intense that there isn't this time to truly I mean if you're going to be really honest about early years mm. there isn't time um, and we don't get the planning or anything that teachers do in schools mm. Mm. they should yeah. be the same mm. respect for preschools as mm. there is for schools mm. but there isn't mm. so we're expected to do all of this mm. Mm. Without actually the time to um, put it, to allow the, it weave together. Mm. Yeah. So uh, this is my thing: is like, how can I make <coughs> a book like mm. this mm. practical? Mm. Mm. Hopefully, we have written it in such a way that it can inspire. Mm. It's not just a lot of concepts mm. Uh, mm -hmm. being, uh, but inspire them because the concepts are, these concepts are illustrated with a lot of play situations, mm. so, so hopefully it's quite easy to read it mm. and it can be inspiring. But I think you're totally right that you need to try it and you mm. and discuss it afterwards and also try it again. And so, so Change the system so we get more time. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what I'm after. There's mm. <laughs> like nothing you can do really about that. But <laughs> yeah, but time is important. Mm. Another question? Well, I thank you for listening.